take the scenic way home. It's Friday. Okay, so for the last couple of years, my bike has been due for the uh, valve check service. The valves are due at 26,000 miles. I'm in a few Super Tenere groups and nobody, a lot of people that get this done, they spend $800 or $900 or $700 or something like that um, on valve checks at 50,000 miles and nothing is out of spec and everything looks good. So that's kind of what I anticipate is probably going to happen with mine which has about 32,000 miles on it. Um, but I've said the last couple of years because I just, I ride it so much, especially in the spring and the summer, and I do take it on, uh, you know, rougher terrain, and I do take it off-road, and I do go through the forests and the woods and all that kind of stuff, and I do want to take it on the BDR this summer, um, to be determined, I might take the KLX instead. Uh, so, I had looked into it a year and two years ago about getting it done, and the quotes at that time were like seven or eight hundred dollars, and I just kind of, oh, I just didn't want to spend that much on something that um, probably doesn't have to be done. But now I'm way over, uh, I'm, you know, six or seven thousand miles over when it should be done. So I inquired to a shop, um, my local Yamaha dealer, which for all intents and purposes sucks. I have not had a good experience there with anything, whether it be looking to buy something, looking for accessories, ordering parts, anything. Um, just have never had a good experience there. So uh, they asked, hey, do you want to maybe do the 25,000 mile service, which includes the valves? And I was like, yeah, you know, if the price isn't really all that different, um, then sure, let's uh, just give me a quote for that. If the prices are pretty close to do just the valves or the valves and the 25,000 mile service. And so he sends me the quote. He, he didn't tell me over the phone. He said, I'm going to build the quote and then I'll email it to you. So he emails it to me, $3,300, which is just crazy. I mean, if I were to go sell this bike privately, I'd probably get about 9,500 or so for it. And if I traded it in at a dealer, I bet they would give me like 8,000 or something for it. So to have a regular routine service when the bike is running perfectly be basically a third of its value seems kind of stupid to me. Um, I posted this in the Super Tenere group and a lot of the people were talking about different elements of that 25,000 mile service that definitely don't need to be done, especially if there's not a problem. So. Um, I'll look into it, and I've done valve checks on my Kawasaki KLR 250 before, and that was a piece of cake. It took me an hour or a couple of hours, and that included going to the store and buying shims to do it. But you can find on YouTube people have made videos of doing the valve service on this, and it's like all the time it seems to be taking people seven, eight, nine hours to do. I just don't know if I have the patience for that. Um, the one advantage that that would give me is, uh, I mean, aside from the cost, but the one advantage that it would give me is that I think when you do services on bikes, you get a really like intimate knowledge of them. And I actually think this is going to sound like a little woo woo, but I think it actually brings you a little bit closer to the bike, just in the sense of, uh, you know, you're learning a lot more things about it and, you know, you, you sort of get a deeper appreciation for the bike itself. I know that the KLR 250 that I bought that originally even got me into dirt riding and adventure riding and all that stuff, uh, I I had bought it. The guy who sold it to me, it was completely, um, it was running when I went and uh, checked it out and it was warm so he had turned it on definitely um, and I should have known better. I should have uh, asked him to keep it cold and let me do it entirely. It was a kickstart. And, all that stuff and um, so it runs I get it home I go to turn it on the next day and it will not turn it just will not turn over and uh, finally I did get it turned over changed the gas out it did turn over but any time that it went to 2000 rpm the engine would die and I tried so many different combinations of things and in the end I ended up uh, rebuilding the carburetor I used a bigger jet for it so it was pretty quick it was a lot quicker than my 300 but um, so I rejetted it I did the valves, I changed out the air filter, I changed the oil, 
and then it was just running marvelously. It was running so good. Um, but I got such an appreciation for that bike from doing that, uh, and I sold it, and I, you know, sometimes debate selling it, but it was a kickstart, and it was carbureted, and it was just a pain in the dick to think about doing that stuff um, at any point in the future. So, in the end, I got the KLX 300, and that bike is awesome. Um, so I've got this Super Tenor right now, and what do I do with the Super T? So I have, uh, I feel so bad because it's been so perfect for me. Hasn't had a single problem. It's been worry-free entirely. I mean, I've taken, I've taken this thing off-road in some pretty crazy places where I didn't have any cell service and it never let me down uh, once. You know, something could have gone horribly wrong. I haven't even had a flat tire on this bike before. Um, so I have a great appreciation for how safe it has kept me. That's another thing is like, how safe has the bike kept me? And I've been very fortunate where every bike that I've owned, I've, I've had some close calls too, um, particularly on my FZ1, fishtailing at 70 miles an hour and running into a buddy of mine and keeping the bike straight up. Um, I remember feeling a deep appreciation for the bike then, that it kept me safe and kept me, kept me up and everything. Um, so, but anyway, the, I feel bad because I, so I bought this bike three years ago and it's been great and I've put 17,000 miles on it, 18,000 miles on it. Um, been worry-free, but it is not an exciting bike, I guess you'd say. I've gotten the ECU flashed on it, so it feels, I mean, it's pretty quick. Like, it, it can hustle, and uh, when you're bombing down the freeway, like I did the Iron Butt last year from Seattle to Missoula, Montana, had lunch with a buddy and then came home, and we did that in about 15 hours or so, uh, and that was a blast, and it was a thousand miles, and we were just going, you know, 80, bombing down there. It's 80 miles per hour is the speed limit in Montana, and it's 75 in most of Idaho, so we were going somewhere between 75 and as high as 90 just cruising, and uh, my bike never, I don't even know if it ever exceeded 4,500 RPM, so it was, uh, it's just been a tank. It's been a joy. It's been a pleasure. Um, so I don't know, is this the time to look at something else. I've looked at the Africa Twin. I test rode one, uh, it was a 2017 probably, um, that I test rode before I bought this. And I liked it, but I had never even done off-road before. I just wanted an adventure-oriented bike, one that was a little bit better for traveling, um, that I might be able to do some dirt at some point. And it was fine, but it did feel like a lot of bike, and it felt very, very top-heavy. Um, the Super Tenere doesn't feel necessarily top heavy. It's definitely a heavy bike, but just the geometry and the way to which that Yamaha built it, a lot of that weight feels like it's lower and that it is shifted a little bit more forward than most bikes in the class might be. So it is huge. It's 585 pounds without accessories, which means with all my stuff on it, it's probably, I mean, I don't know, 610, 625 maybe. Um, so it is a heavy bike, but at the same time, you have a 600 pound Yamaha, or you get a 525 pound Africa Twin, do you even notice the difference? You know, it's, I guess it's, I guess that'd be 15% lighter. I don't know if you would notice the difference, especially in the off-road and like low speed maneuvering. I don't know if you'd even notice the difference, especially the way the Africa Twin weight sits. And then also, like, unless you're going to spend an arm and a leg and get the adventure package, which is $20,000, ridiculous. Um, I don't know if it's ridiculous or not. Per relative value is such a hard thing to quantify because what's worth a bunch to me is not worth much to anybody else. And what's worth a lot to somebody else is not worth anything to me. So that's just how it is, I guess. But uh, the regular, the base model, with a DCT, because I want to try something different. I think the DCT is pretty sweet. So... With a DCT, it would be about 15 grand. And you know, you trade this in, you get eight for it. You don't have to pay, you don't pay the differential on the tax in my state. So you can spend it another seven or $8,000. And you know, so it does, does certainly add up. But the challenge with that though, is that base package, you've got tube tires, you've got a chain now to take care of. But you do have a brand new bike, but you have to, then buy all the protection and all the farkles and everything like that. I don't know, it just sounds like a lot. I gotta go find an independent mechanic. This 
bike is it's so comfortable. I mean, it's weird. I think it's because, uh, so the KLX is very stretched out. The pegs are very low for the standing position and things like that. And because I haven't ridden this in over two months now, and all I've been riding is that KLX around town, uh, this almost feels like a little cramped, which is funny to say, because I'm a small guy, five foot seven, and this bike feels cramped, which is weird. All right, so we are in beautiful Muckleteo, Washington right now. So anyway, that's uh, that's kind of where I am with the you know the thoughts of the maintenance, the maintenance thing that you do on there. <laughs> so anyway, uh, thanks for hanging out with me. I promise I will have more simulating content as time goes on, especially as the winter, or sorry, as the yeah, as the winter ends and we get into spring and summer, and I'm doing much more exciting rides and dirt rides after the KLX is broken in. This is going to be a lot better channel, I promise. So anyway, have a great one.